Some houses have a keep off the grass sign, while other houses have signs that tell house flippers like you and I to steer clear and keep looking. When you see these signs of a potential money pit, it is important, important, important to tread carefully and crunch the numbers really well to make sure that your flip is not a flop. So I'm gonna to talk to you about 10 signs of a potential money pit. Hi, I'm Jonathan Otero. I'm the owner of J&J &J Management Group and the owner of We Buy Houses Seminole. So these are signs that I've learned in my experience to watch out for. It doesn't necessarily mean you wanna walk away, but it's just something that you have to make sure that when you're doing your due diligence, you crunch those numbers and you make sure that there's enough room for in the deal that if these become a money pit, you still have enough room to make a profit. So let's talk about as you're walking through the, ho the home and you're evaluating whether this is a project that you're gonna take on, let's take a look, let's try to figure out what we're gonna look for when we get started. The first thing and the number one thing is water stains. You wanna take a look at water stains all around, in the floorboards, in the walls, on the ceilings especially. If you can look up and you see a water stain on the ceiling, it's a sign of a potential roof problem. It could be from a pipe that's up there maybe, but it also could be from a roof. Maybe the shingles need to be redone or maybe the whole roof needs to come off and it needs to be totally renovated. And that could be a huge expense. So when you're walking through a property and you see those ceilings or you see water stains somewhere, it's important to try to figure out where that stain is coming from, where that water is coming from, if it's an active leak or if it's from a previous leak. That can help you determine whether or not if you're gonna to continue to move forward in this project. So water stains are huge. The next thing that you wanna look at as you're walking through the house is the foundation. So you wanna see if the foundation on the inside of the house and on the outside of the house, if it's buckling, if you see cracks in the foundation, here in Florida, I'm in Orlando, Florida, and a lot of times a lot of houses are built with stucco here. And you'll see cracks going up and down vertically. That's normal, that's settling cracks. But if you see those vertical cracks, cracks that are going across from left to right, that could be a huge problem. So you, as you're walking through your home, you want to take a look and see, is this foundation buckling? Now, again, mind you, it doesn't necessarily mean you walk away from it because foundation problems, anything can, can be fixed. It just matters how much money that you want to make out of this deal and that's why you have to crunch your numbers properly because a foundation problem could be something as simple as maybe two or three thousand dollars or it could be somewhere around twenty to thirty thousand dollars so you have to be very very careful the next thing you want to look at is mold mold in the attic or mold on the walls as well i'll put on the walls as well As you're walking around, if you see, if there, was, if there was a previous water stain, maybe now there's mold starting to build up on the bottom of those walls, especially in the bathrooms. A lot of builders, a lot of people who build homes or a lot of people who have renovated their bathrooms, they don't realize that you have to put a special type of sheetrock inside of the shower. And that sheetrock prevents moisture and prevents mold. It's called Wonderboard. It's a green sheetrock. Some people just go to their local Home Depot or Lowe's and they buy regular sheetrock and then when they're renovating their shower, they put that there and then they lay the tiles on top of that. And that's a big no-no. So you want to look in those bathrooms. You want to look throughout the whole house and see if you see any mold stains on the walls, any mold stains in the attic. You want to try to get up in that crawl space and look at those floors and, and those, those, those wood beams and see if you see any of that. Because if you do, that could be a huge problem to try to get rid of. Not only do you have to get rid of the mold, you have to get rid of those pieces of wood or those pieces of sheetrock and replace them. And that can cost big, big bucks. The next thing you want to look at is rotting. Rotting or standing water. And the most places that you see these types of rotting water is usually by the windows. So check all the windows. If the weather stripping on the windows has rotted or broken off, water can get in and it, would, it, it stays there at the bottom of the windowsill. Usually it, it, may, it may run down, so you may see that on the, on the uh, sheetrock itself. But if it's not and it's just sitting there standing and it's rotting, that smell is, is tough to get out. You have to replace the whole thing. Not only the sheetrock, but you have to replace the whole window itself. 
and windows are expensive as well to fix. If you've ever renovated your windows in your own personal home, even if you got the cheapest windows possible, they are expensive, the installation itself. So be very, very careful with that. What you wanna look at is sagging floors. If the floors are sagging, not a good sign. If you're walking through the house and you're starting to bounce like this, like if you're in a trampoline, not a good sign. That means you have to not only take out those floors that are there, whatever they are, tiles or wood or whatever it may be, and, and maybe replace those beams underneath there or replace the floor, that the subfloor that's underneath there. Um, it could be a huge, huge problem. If it's creaking a little bit, that's okay. That could, that could be um, easily fixed. But if you, can, if you see a floor that's buckling or sagging and you can bounce on that floor, that's not a good sign. That could be a potential huge money pit. The other thing you want to look at is a sagging roof line. When you walk outside, if you can stand back away from the house and try to see as best as you can, if it's a one level house, it's easier. If it's a two level house, not so easy. You may have to get a stand on a ladder to try to see it. But if you can take a look and step back and see that roof line and it starts to buckle and sag at a certain point in the roof, that could be a potential huge issue and that could be that could cause multiple issues if you have a sagging roof line that's probably the reason why you have the water stains because water is getting in there and the roof is starting to just become a big mess and everything is going to eventually collapse so make sure that you're standing there and you're trying to look at that roof line you want to see an even pitch all across another thing that could be a potential money pit and a lot of people don't realize this because they're only looking at the house but when you're purchasing a flip you have to look at the total picture so you want to take a look at the neighbors as well. You may have neighbors from hell. If your neighbors are causing a lot of problems, um, while you're renovating the property, they can do things like, um, if, you're, if you're causing a lot of noise with your construction, they can call the police or they can call code enforcement or anything, they can call inspectors to come in and code enforcement and things like that to see if you have all your permits. As long as you have all your permits, you're good. But when that happens, everyone has to stop working. They have to do the inspection and make sure everything is, is on the up and up. And that can cost time, that can cost money. And these neighbors could be huge, huge problems. I'm sure you guys have seen the flipping shows and there's been times on some of those shows that I've seen where the neighbors come in and they're starting to meddle in uh, all, to, all into the construction and they're causing issues. As well as once, once the day is done and your workers are done working on that property or you're done working on that property and you lock everything up, you, walk, you go back home. You don't live there. You don't know what's going on. You don't have a security system put in place there. So you don't know what's happening. Those neighbors, you don't know what could be happening. I've heard stories where neighbors break in and it's just a whole big problem. So if you have neighbors from hell, that could be a huge money pit. So you realize here, you're starting to see, yeah, there's signs that you can look inside the house. But my gosh, there's other things that I have to worry about as well, the neighbors. You also have to look at, with the neighbors, speak, keeping on that topic, do your neighbors have dogs that eat red meat? Little small, little cute dogs, that's not a, little, that's not a problem. But if they have those big Doberman or those big Rottweiler type dogs and they're eating that red meat, uh, they're not even eating dog food, they're just throwing a steak out and the dog is just ripping into it, that could be a huge money pit and let me explain to you why. If you're fixing that property up and you're going to then go sell it to a family that has small children and they walk out there and they hear that dog barking or they see that dog with a piece of steak in his mouth eating that raw steak, they're going to look at that and go, well, do I want to live in this property and have my small children have to be, you know, is that dog going to jump over the fence or how safe is that? Is that, is that fence going to be tall enough to make sure that that dog doesn't jump over us? And what happens if my kid's outside one day? And the ball goes, you know, running over there. What do I do? So, you know, you want to make sure that the neighbors, you may have neighbors from hell. You may have great neighbors, but they have a Rottweiler that's sitting out there that is scaring to death half the people that come see your property. So that could be a big money pit because then you're just sitting with the property on the market and it's not selling and it's not moving. And you can't tell the neighbors, hey, you got, got to get rid of your dog. You can't do that. So that could be a big, big potential money pit. So watch out for that. Another thing is... Um, if the house has more cats than humans in it, I've seen houses where um, people have had numerous cats 
and the house, the cats, they urinate all over the place. And I don't know if you've ever walked into a house that has a lot of cats and the cats have urinated all over the place and the carpet and everything. The smell inside the house is nearly impossible to get rid of. It can be done, but it costs a lot of money. It's like the smell gets into the sheetrock, it gets into the floors, it gets into the ceilings, it gets into the vents. It, it's like, I don't know where it comes from, but it's just the hardest thing to remove. If you've ever done house flipping and you flipped a house that had a lot of cats in it, you know what I'm talking about. The smell is just hard to get over, it's hard to breathe, and it's just, even if you rip out all the carpets and you tear out all the walls, it's just almost impossible to get that smell out there. I still haven't figured out how to get out the smell of cats, cat urine and, and things like that. So that could be a big potential money pit. The last, the last thing that you want to take a look at is if your house is in a potential high crime area. Not that to say that it's not going to um, be something that you walk away from. You don't just flip houses in the best neighborhoods in town. But it's something that you want to take into consideration because being in a high crime area leaves you susceptible to a couple things. As you're working and at night while you're, when everybody goes home and, the, and the, um, the shop is closed, so to speak, chances of robberies are, are high. Uh, people can break in because they know the house is vacant and they know there's a lot, a lot of materials that are in there. That could be one problem. And also when you go to sell the house, it's going to be a concern to whoever you sell the house to. Unless you're, you're um, selling it to a tenant buyer or you're going to keep it as a buy and hold type of property, that's not such a big problem. But if you're trying to flip the house and, and just get in and get out real quick, if it's a high crime area, it could be a potential money pit. So you just want to be careful with that. Um, so these are the 10 signs of a potential money pit that you want to look for. Water stains, foundation issues, mold in the attic and the walls, rotting standing water, sagging floors, a sagging roof, neighbors from hell, dogs uh, from the neighbors that are huge and look like they could eat you, more cats than humans in the property and get that urine smell out of there, and the high crime area. Again, these are not signs necessarily that you'll walk away from if you see one or two or three of these. As long as you have enough room in the deal to still turn a profit, these can all be fixed. A lot of these things, can you can handle these things. You just don't walk away from a deal just because it has one or two of these. But if it does, you want to just have a red flag up and you want to make sure, like I said before in the beginning of the video, you crunch the numbers carefully and you make sure to do your due diligence because if you don't, this could be a potential huge, huge problem. So you can take a look at our website at webuyhouseofseminal.org for some more information. Our number is 407-796-8557. Uh, so hopefully you're getting deals done. You're getting properties under contract that have enough room in the deal. You're flipping those properties, fixing them up, and putting money into your bank account. See you guys on the next video.